So my name is Rahul Shashi. I'm an ethical hacker. And I'm here to hack your bank accounts. <laughs> so how many of you think that your bank accounts are secure? Raise your hands. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, almost all of the people. Well, let me prove you guys wrong. Uh, how many of you have used this thing called phone banking? You know, it's something where you make a call to your bank, a computer generated system responds back, asking you to enter your account number, follow your PIN code, when it authenticates, give you all the details. So that's basically phone banking, right? We basically build a program to automate this. What the program does is, what the program does is, it makes a call to the bank, it automatically tries to brute force your password because it's a four digit ATM pin. And not only just brute forces your password, it brute forces hundred other, thousand other accounts for the common password one, two, three, four. So the, the number of people who would have the password ATM pin code one, two, three, four out of thousand different accounts would be really high, right? So let me show you the program. Uh, so basically the program is connected to a mobile phone over there and the program will automatically call uh, the bank. If you are an existing customer, press 1 to report loss of card. Please select from the following five choices at any time during this. Please enter your 16 digit debit card or 12. So, what is happening is a pro computer program is talking to another computer program. Everything is automated and it's trying to brute force other people's bank accounts. So right now, uh, it can understand what the computer voice is saying, it converts that back to text, figures out what option it should choose, and it sends back. Everything is automated, that means you can hack one bank account at a time when we disclose this particular issue. This was back in 2011. Uh, a couple of banks still is vulnerable to these. So a couple of them have fixed it. So now it asks for the password. So we try a common password, like I mentioned. Please enter your four-digit ATM or debit card pin, or press one. <laughs> Authentication is successful. Ta -da. The available balance <laughs> in your account is. You are in someone's bank account. Thousand five hundred twenty-five rupees. So, so next time when ask someone asks you, press star to repeat. Next time someone asks you whether it's secure, don't say yes. Uh, so what you saw was IVR applications. They are called interactive voice response systems because they use voice to communicate back to the user. The normal web applications you use, they show uh, a text. That's why you read them. Here, it reads out to you, right? So what we figured out was if you can trigger an exception, exception is like an error. If you can confuse the application, the application would read out the entire internal information back to you. So if you can confuse it some way, you would be able to do this. So in this case, the application expects a four digit pin Please code, enter your pin. but we are going to confuse it with giving a more uh, than four digit input. And what happens is, the application now triggers an error, and the entire error would re be read out to you. And this error would have a lot of sensitive information like internal IP addresses, program names, file names, or whatever. Please wait while we process your information. Sorry, that content has an internal error. A web server error occurred. Error starting it's voice XML application failed mesh with code. 500, server error, URL, http colon slash slash 192.168.43. Internal IP address, a lot of, lot of things. So yeah, so basically, there are so many different ways of hacking into something. The possibilities are endless. All you have to do is look into it. Uh, this is a research which I did with my colleague, I have Nafis. What we are basically trying to do was impress our girlfriends. Uh, by trying to propose them over the TV. So uh, the idea was, if you are watching star movies at your home, what if I can inject my own videos and broadcast it to your houses? 
Like, have you seen the Die Hard movie? Exactly the same thing. So let me show you how we did it. So you might remember the famous YouTube interview of Rahul Gandhi with Arnab Goswami. With an exclusive channel dedicated so maybe, to the you know, best when you're of friends from the channel, we as hackers, we will be able to inject our own videos into our choice. Videos. And then you will be able to watch our videos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Knowledge is free and Garage Forum is to Libre knowledge. You may acquire, interpret and apply freely the knowledge you gain from Garage. The knowledge can be reformulated according to one's needs and shared with others for community. This video could be anything. It could be anything of your choice, you know. For our purpose was to demonstrate our, you know, love to our girlfriends uh, on the TV. So we did the entire thing using this particular setup, which we built using less than 80 USD. That's like less than 5,000 rupees. Uh, what we basically did was, Times Now comes in a particular frequency. We signal out the entire frequency of Times Now and recreated our own video in the same frequency as of Times Now and then broadcasted it onto the network. So that means I can not only really control your videos, I can control the video of an entire city. So an entire city would watch what I decide they should watch. It could be anything. So moving on. Hey, by the way, this is the garage which we worked on. We spent almost like eight months trying to figure out a lot of things. Uh, so this is the entire mess which was created out of the research. Uh, moving on. How many of you use LinkedIn over here? I use it. It's very popular. I really like it. All right. That's a good number of people. Uh, LinkedIn is a microblogging sites for professionals. What, we fi what I figured out is, I can make any individual on LinkedIn my employee without their consent. I can basically uh, ask any of the LinkedIn users, I mean, make any of the LinkedIn users my employee. That means I'll get access to their information, personal information. I can communicate to them. I can pretty much do anything which I can do to my employees. So I had a couple of interesting people whom I wanted to make my employees. So I started with Bill Gates. So Bill Gates was my first employee and followed by President Obama. And I like Narendra Modi as well. So he was my third employee. And then Mark Cuban, uh, which because he's a cool guy. So uh, many, of these security many of these companies have a security disclosure policies where if a hacker discloses a particular bug to them, they pay for it. Uh, or, you know, they, ca they, they take good care of the hackers. So this was done part of a responsible disclosure thing. <clears throat> Have you seen these drones, these small flying drones, which are, which are very popular these days to talk, take photographs? Have you seen one of them in real life? Right. I mean, they are, they are very popular because it's mechanically very simple. What they do is they have sensors which collects data from their environment, passes the data to a software program which is embedded in it. And the software program is like the brain which decides whether what action this drone should do. Whether it should move left or right is, is controlled by the software. What we did is we created another program like a malware, a virus, which stays in between the hardware unit and the software unit. So any request that comes from the hardware passes through our malicious program and it actually comes back to me, the attacker. So if a drone is moving left, I can move, make it move right because I'm a proxy in between, right? Uh, let me show you how that is. So this is basically a tiny, uh, a tiny personal drone. What it can do is it can go high up in the air. It can has got an autopilot function. That means stay up in the air on its own, you don't have to control it. Uh, 
once it's the, the drone is infected, my payload would actually stop its engine. That means it'll keep crashing down. Since this is an expensive device, I'm going to stand somewhere near and hold, catch hold of it. Uh, so in any minute, the payload would be successful and the d engines would stop working and the drone should keep uh, dropping dead. So one, two, three, and dead. <laughs> That's acting crazy, but right now. Yes. So yeah, so you can just basically walk over all the guys who take photographs, hijack their drones, and make them bring it to your houses. Right, fly to their houses. Again, this was a tiny, small program which did the act. What I figured out is, when you do a lot of research, you learn a lot of things, right? What I learned is, I used to go out to my uh, tennis court to perform this act every day. What I didn't knew was there was an awesome hacker who lives in my apartment. I never knew this guy existed. While I was doing the research, I accidentally stumbled upon this guy. Uh, you can see that you know I was trying to hack this device, and in a few minutes, this amazing hacker shows up, and he's actually able to show a better technique to hijack any drones. So any moment, you will see this cool, awesome hacker, much better than me, having a better capability of hacking drones and he'll demonstrate it right now. So I'll fly my drone right now, and the hacker would come any minute, and there you go. <laughs> so you, you, basically, you basically don't need a program to do this. You basically throw anything at that particular drone, and you can bring it down, you know? Sometimes things are simple, but you, you overthink about it. But yeah, so that's the little hacker who lives in my apartment. So people ask me, how do I get into hacking? Uh, what motivated me? This is one question I get a lot. The motivation was, uh, I had a very troubled school day. Uh, most of the days, my parents were summoned to the school because of my lack of concentration. When things got worse, they took me to a neurologist where I, was, uh, where I did a lot of EEG tests, and I was diagnosed for a medical condition with my brain waves. The problem was, my brains were incapable of focusing on one particular thing for more than three seconds. So even if, when I'm attending a lecture, I would not be able to grasp the entire lecture. I would be able to absorb every three seconds, my brain would go somewhere and it comes back. So I was very difficult to understand lecture. So when I got into college, the same thing continued, and uh, it was no point for me to sit in a lecture and attend it. So I started bunking classes. When you start bunking glasses, your attendance comes around and you're in much bigger trouble, right? So in my school days, college days, all the attendance of the staffs were managed by these biometric devices. Have you seen these things? The biometric fingerprint devices, right? You know, you use your fingerprint to... Uh, so, staffs use this for, uh, for their daily attendance. The logs are saved on these devices temporarily. Later, an administrator could remotely log into these devices and collect the logs. That means this is connected on a network, which means I can sit in my dormitory and hack into these devices. So after many sleepless nights, I figured out that if I send fake UDP packets to this device, pretending it to be coming from the administrator's computer, this device would give me complete access to its locks. So what you see over here is my staff's fingerprints and their login details. So I can basically swap my fingerprint with their fingerprint and I can go to any restricted area in my college, or I can do pretty much, or I can mark a particular staff absent on a particular day. Or, you know, you can do a lot of possibilities are endless. So uh, this is me. Uh, uh, hacking is my passion. I now run a computer company called CloudCheck. So hacking to me is about solving challenging problems. It's about overcoming the difficulties in your personal life as well as your technical life and finding solutions for tougher problems. Thank you.